Hi, this is Trisha from Lemon Paper Lab. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a custom frame that you can use in Canva. For this, we are also going to use Illustrator to help create our custom frame. Uh, first off, let's look at what a frame is in Canva. I'm just going to go ahead and create a design here and we'll just use one of the default Instagram posts here. And then under elements, you can search for frames here, and then you'll see a number of frames uh, that you can choose from to uh, use within Canva. So let's just go ahead and select a frame here. And then uh, with the frame, you can add a photo. So we'll select um, a dog image here, and then we'll just drag it into our frame, and then your picture will take on the shape of your frame. So again, we'll jump back into uh, the frame search here. And so there are a lot of frames to choose from, but in a certain case, you may want a specific shape to use um, for your frame. And if Canva doesn't have that, you can create it with an illustrator and bring it into Canva. And that is what I'm going to uh, demonstrate for you today. So let's go ahead and bring up Illustrator. We'll go ahead and create a new file and uh, the size of your file doesn't necessarily matter. I'm just going to go six inches by six inches and then I'll just go ahead and click on create here. For this, I'm going to create a flower shape. So let's go ahead and bring up our lips tool here. You can always right click to select the lips tool. Uh, the keyboard shortcut for it is L. I'll just hold down shift and draw out my circle here. And then I'm going to go ahead and change my fill to black and then change my stroke to a no stroke here. And then we'll just go ahead and access the uh, selection tool here. And then I'm just going to uh, center it here on the canvas vertically and horizontally. And then I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. So we'll just go command or control C and then paste in front command or control F. And then we'll just move this shape here. So I'm just going to align it and position it here and then and then next we are going to rotate it around the circle here. So I've got my object selected here and then I'm going to access the rotate tool. So the keyboard shortcut for that is R on the keyboard and you'll notice uh, the rotate tool here in the um, tools panel. And then I'm going to hit option click. And then I'm just going to uh, click on the center of that circle. This is going to be our access point. And then we see the uh, rotate uh, panel uh, dialog box show up here. And for this, I want five petals. So I'm going to um, use 72 degrees. That is 360 divided by five equals 72 uh, degrees here to uh, create my angle of rotation. Here you can see the little preview box. You have your original. You'll see how much it will rotate here. And then for this, I want a copy. So I will select copy there. And then the next step will be to um, create some additional copies and we are going to hit the um, keyboard shortcut for that will be command or control D. And basically that is the transform again function of Illustrator. So we'll hit that holding command or control, just selecting D until we get our five copies of our shape here. So now we have the um, basic shape here. Um, over here in the layers panel, we see our different um, ellipses here. And in this case, I want it to be one shape. I don't want it to be separate um, circles here. So uh, just with my uh, direct selection tool here, I'm just going to highlight all of my objects here. And then I'm going to use the shape builder tool. So we'll find that here in our panel here. The keyboard shortcut for that is Shift M. So we'll select the Shape Builder tool. And then just starting outside of my shape, I will just draw a line along all the different parts of my um, circles here, just so I get everything selected, just selecting those small parts here. And then when I unclick uh, here, we see it becomes uh, just one shape. The paths have combined to be a uh, one shape here. So just with my direct selection tool here, I can see I have my shape here. 
this shape is a vector so you can easily resize it we'll go ahead and undo that here this time i'll hold down the shift key just to keep it in proportion we'll just make it a little bit larger so so it fills our canvas we'll try that again holding the shift and letting go and we have our flower shape here the next step to make this a frame is we need to insert an image so the image I'm using today is just one that I'm going to download from Unsplash. This is a place that you can find images that are uh, free for commercial use um, that you can use with your projects here. And I'll just leave a link to the particular image that I'm using here today. So I've already downloaded it. We'll go jump back into Illustrator here. And then I'm going to go to File, Place navigating to your image just select it and then just place it and with that you can draw out um, the image here on your canvas there you go add to size it appropriately there so I'm just going to zoom out command minus key I've got my image and my uh, shape so I'm going to click on that layer and then just drag it behind the uh, shape of my flower. So uh, with the direct selection tool, I'm just going to select both of those objects there. And then now we are going to create a clipping mask. So, so we are gonna go to object, we'll scroll down to clipping mask here and then just select make. And then that image is now um, in a clipping mask with our shape here. Uh, so the next step is we need to uh, now export this as a PDF file. So to do that in Illustrator, I'm going to um, select the window and I'm going to bring out up my asset export panel here. Clicking on this object we have here, just going to drag it into the asset export panel here we can see our asset and then here under format you can hit the drop down you can see uh, various formats here in this case we do want PDF and then you'll just go ahead and click on export go ahead and, and navigate to your folder and then you can just click on choose next we are going to jump into Canva since we downloaded our asset as a PDF, you cannot upload it directly within a document. You need to uh, go back to the home screen here, and then just under your projects, you'll click on this plus um, icon to click on add new, and then you'll just click to upload it. Um, as we can see under my folder here, I created a folder called PDF and this is where it saved the our flower um, to. So we'll go ahead and open that. And then just scrolling down to see uh, that it has been downloaded, I'll just go ahead and click to open that document. So now we see our asset1.pdf here and then we can exit out of that there. So we have our flower. We have our flower with our image. So if I click on this shape here and then I go ahead and hit the delete icon, I can select delete image. And now we have uh, what looks like a traditional frame here in Canva. So if I go to elements and search for um, search for dog again, in this case we can use our recently used image that we used before. I can drag it into my frame and it will behave like a frame. I can double click it. I can choose to enlarge my image. We can reposition it within our frame and it will behave like a typical frame does in Canva. Uh, so one thing to note when you do create your own uh, frames, um, it's not like you can easily search for it um, like you do a frame here in Canva. Um, some of the suggestions is you may want to uh, save this file into a particular folder where you keep all your custom frames. Um, you could create one master document um, where you can copy and paste all your frames into that one document. Um, so you can keep track of it that way, bookmark that uh, document. So if you want to go ahead and find one of your specific custom frames, you can find it in your master document. Uh, just different ways to kind of keep track of the custom frames in which you create uh, for Canva here. 
Thank you for watching this video on how to create a custom frame uh, with Illustrator that you can use in Canva. If you liked this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment below. This is Trisha from Lemon Paper Lab. See you next time.